You're watching the Western Athletic Conference on ESPN. Welcome to the brand new Moody Coliseum in Abilene, Texas for ESPN College Volleyball tonight. A special night as the Oklahoma Sooners are in town to battle the Abilene Christian Wildcats. And now welcome courtside everybody, Zach Carlisle along with Maddie Miller, glad to have you with us. Well, first of all, I don't think we can go into this game without talking about how special it is to be back in Moody Coliseum. Yeah, Zach, this is the first game being played in Moody Coliseum since it's reopened this year, and I know that the Wildcats are looking to come out and uh, set the tone for the season. It's going to be a tough one tonight. you got this Oklahoma team out of the Big 12 that's off to their best start, 7-3 and three, since 2019. I'm curious to see how these Wildcats attack the Sooners tonight. Yeah, Zach, I think um, the Wildcats have a few new people on the team this year that they're looking for um, different uh, – strengths for them, but I know OU is going to come out guns a blazing and ready to bring what they have and show the Wildcats who they are. So it's going to be definitely a big fight. Can't wait for this matchup. Oklahoma, as we mentioned, off to their best start in three years in ACU under a new direction of first year head coach Elisa Blair. We're going to send it over to the third member of our team, Kerry Johnston, who had a chance to talk about Elisa Blair. Thanks, Zach. Though many people may not expect it, ACU head coach Elisa Blair has a unique connection to both ACU and the big country. From 2009 to 2012, Blair played at the Division II University of Angelo State, just an hour and a half south of Abilene. In her time as a Rambell, she played as an outside hitter and the fishing specialist, and was praised by her first ability by her then head coach. As a member of the Lone Star Conference, Blair faced then Division II Conference rival, Abilene Christian six times, with both teams splitting the matchup. Now, Blair has made her return to the Bay Country, and it will be interesting to see how her experience will now impact the Wildcats program. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much. There is head coach Elisa Blair in year number one as the head coach of the Abilene Christian Wildcats. Off to this three and five start. Native, a rather, a graduate of Angelo State 10 years ago. Longtime assistant at SFA when those Lady Jacks were dominating on the court in the Southland Conference. How about a 105 win campaign as an assistant coach at SFA? They just introduced the Sooners. Now they're introducing the Wildcats as they dim the lights here in the brand new Moody Coliseum. I think this is going to be an electric atmosphere here tonight. But I tell you what, this is going to be a fun night here in this building. And they're getting it ready and fired up already uh, with the lights dimmed here at Moody. Yeah, Zach, this is the first time that we've seen Moody go dark with the lights going on and the big screen back up. I think everybody's feeling the energy here tonight. Yeah, I can't wait for this. They're playing that intro video as the ladies take a peek at it on the video board. This is Moody Coliseum that originally was built 1968 all the way up through the 2019-2020 school year. Renovations then started in November of 2020. Fast forward a couple of years and we are back in the newly renovated facility, Anthony Arena in Moody Coliseum. This place is fired up. Briley Steinilber, the sophomore out of Kennedale, Texas, Madison Rohr, longtime Wildcat, gets to start as the setter to the red shirt senior, Bree Box. Senior middle blocker out of Wichita Falls. Freshman Ashley Edmiston has been a superstar so far for Adeline Christian. Comes out onto the floor. London Gray, the senior in her second year at ACU. Transfer out of Georgia. Logan Browning. The libero tonight, the senior out of Wichita Falls. And Braden Bozier will also be getting the start tonight as well. The junior middle blocker out of Fairfield, Texas. Number 15, your middle blocker is Braden Bozier. 
Lights are back on. Let's play some volleyball. How excited are you for tonight, Maddie? I'm super excited, Zach. This is going to be a big test for the Wildcats this year. The, uh, the, the net this year for OU is pretty big compared to us, and so I think it's going to be a it's going to be a dogfight up at the net and on the back row for the Wildcats. Yeah, you got this Oklahoma team that is tall, 6'4", 6'3", 6'2". I mean, they're going to have a lot of height, a lot of athleticism. Abilene Christian, a little bit of a smaller team. Going to have to play maybe some scrappy volleyball here tonight. The Sooners, as we mentioned, off to their best start. Seven and wins, two losses. Best start since 2019 under head coach Lindsey Gray Walton. Looking to go back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since that 2019 campaign as well. Oklahoma's on a seven-game road trip, the final game of a seven-game road trip. ACU opened with all eight on the road for the first time playing Moody Coliseum. This place is electric. ACU's got first serve. The buildup is here. The building is finally open. Glad you're with us. Off we go from Abilene, Texas. Right side soft touch from Alexis Shelton and the point goes to the Sooners. OU coming off of wins in California. In fact, four in a row now, if you go back to September 3rd when they beat Lipscomb, Santa Clara, Tulane, and then coming off of the 3-1 win over Fresno State. OU tries the right side again. Megan Wilson, who's been a superstar for the Sooners. With all the reach that they have on the front side of OU, I think the back row and Wildcats is going to have to be ready to, to move around the block and make sure that they pick up balls on the back side. Service error for the first Wildcat point of the night. The 66th service error of the season for OU. They are going to check on it. We talked about Elisa Blair on the other side. How about Lindsey Gray Walton, fifth year head coach of Oklahoma? Graduated from Georgia Tech in 2008. 57 wins in her time with the Sooners. And looking to get her team back to the NCAAs for the first time since 2019. Obviously, it's been very chaotic playing in the spring of 2021. You almost had to wait two full years uh, to play again. And then last season, a 10-win campaign. But this Oklahoma team's off to a good start, and they've got a talented group there in Norman. Yeah, you would, uh, you would think that coach is excited having a few young players on the front row. You know, she's got a couple years to build on what she has. And I think, like you said, going back to the NCAA tournament is the ultimate goal. And so I think she has a good lineup here that she could um, work on throughout the years and get there. Yeah, Oklahoma returns eight from last year's team, but they really had a top 10 class, a signing class last November that they were very excited about. And then they got a couple of transfers as well in uh, Oliver and Chamberlain. And so there's some new faces for these Sooners. They're still reviewing the point to see if the serve was in or out. Hard to tell a little bit these lines on the new court here in Moody. You got the dark brown that's integrated onto the wood on the floor. So it might be challenging at times to see the point. Oh, there was de there, these lines are definitely a little faint, Zach. Um, that one, that ball also was very close uh, to the end line or the out line. So it will definitely be interesting to see if this gets replayed. How important for Abilene Christian is it, a team that's, that's coming in, you're going to be a little undersized, a tough opponent. How important is it to get off to a good start tonight? I think it's going to be um, very important to get off to a good start tonight, Zach. And we're going to have to capital, ACU is going to have to capitalize on these little plays. And um, if this ball goes for ACU, they're going to have to use it to their advantage and just take the points that OU will give them because it's going to be really hard for them to earn points 
in certain parts of this game. OU coach's challenge does not work. The point stays with Abilene Christian and Ashley Edmiston, the freshman out of Oregon, will serve things up. Short serve, just got over the net. OU goes to the middle. Well on the attack with Morgan Perkins, who is a very promising freshman for OU. She's hitting 326 so far this season. I think if OU can keep the ball um, close to the net like that off their serve receive, I think they're gonna, we're going to see a lot of the middles tonight. ACU out of the middle, Braden Bosher. You're going to see a lot more out of the middle for Abilene Christian this season. That's some power from the 6'2 junior middle blocker out of Fairfield, Texas. She serves for these Wildcats. OU on the right side. That's a block. Three bucks. And Riley Steinhilber are there. I love seeing ACU come out here and act like they're not afraid. They've had a couple balls go their way, and I think you can see the team's energy and the people on the court and off the court. I think they're ready for this game, Zach. Left side, smoking that. Taylor Preston, another youngster outside hitter out of Kentucky. All-America, first team in high school. Hitting 292 this year, her 82nd kill. Wilson serves. She's been really good, a little bit of everywhere. Great kill numbers, and she can block it up as well. Way deep that time. Second service error for OU. Four through the first eight points. Madeline Guffey, freshman, serves it up for Abilene Christian, rather the sophomore transfer from North Central Texas College. Point to the Sooners and Taylor Preston will serve. AC running that 6-2 formation. Back right serve. Burkle right side. Had to go underhand with it, a block, but it's out of bounds. On the attack was Kelsey Carrington. And the point to the Sooners. Boy, ACU's been active at the net, haven't they? Yeah, Zach, I think this is going to be a pretty big um, challenge for ACU at the net. But I think so far that they've kind of stepped up to the challenge in a lot of ways. They're going to have to look, really focus on playing out a system a lot. Just like that attack from the back row right there was really sharp. Ashley Edmiston, the freshman out of Oregon. Elisa Blair calls her their most rangy hitter, so they really trust her in a lot of different situations. I think that's going to be a big, a big key for the Wildcats tonight, Zach, just being able to play out a system and stay composed when they do, um, when things don't go their way offensively. Location, location, location for Riley Steinhilber. The services are in ACU's favor so far. A couple of errors for OU and a ace now for Steinhilber. Left side, Shelton. Power in that right arm. She brought the heat on that one from the outside. Wow. <laughs> I like their setter too, Peyton Chamberlain. Great locations. She's done a great software. job of mixing it up, sending it to the middle, the right side, outside, so far tonight. Awkward off the reception from ACU. They get it over. From the middle, now for the Sooners. Right back to Morgan Perkins, who is incredibly impressive. Coming off of a ridiculous career game against Fresno State. Career highs and kills, digs, blocks, and aces. A double-double. 
Service error again from Grace Talpesh. This is what ACU is going to have to do tonight, I think. Just take plays off of OU. They have to take the points that they're going to give them and also keep take, take, taking care of their side and just earn points one at a time, I think, is going to keep this game close. Logan Browning serves. Left side, Shelton again. It's been the go-to for the Sooners here in this first set. To go up by a couple. OU opened the season at home in late August. And then seven in a row, capping that off tonight on the road. Their first ever visit to Abilene, Texas. Browning digs it up from Shelton. ECU to Steinhilber. I think that's going to be a really great option for them tonight. Um, bring, driving in the middles, every single play is going to make the middles on the other team guess every time with whether they have to jump or not. And I think they're going to be able to capitalize from the back row on the 10-foot line a few times this game. Steinhilber all whack freshman team a year ago. Madison Rohr, the veteran, serving for Abilene Christian. Out of the middle again, right back to Perkins. Morgan Perkins is very impressive. 6'1 freshman. That was a great find from the setter too, Zach, like you were just saying. She's been very impressive being able to involve every single hitter on her team so far, no matter where the ball is passed. Chloe Kaminsky serves. Left side and a block. It's Wilson. Megan Wilson, we talked about how impressive she is as a sophomore, and she's six foot four. Yeah, that helps out a little bit, I think. Six blocks against Santa Clara, a career high a couple of matches ago for the Sooners. Short serve, Browning, that ain't gonna work. Good location there, worked out for OU. Timeout, Abilene Christian. OU on a 3-0 burst to go up 12-8. First time out in Abilene, Texas. We value sportsmanship on the field and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents and the officials, the fans and our team. Great sportsmanship is about taking ownership after a loss and being humble after a win. We want you to team up with us by staying positive on the sideline. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are the Western Athletic Conference. Back in Abilene, Texas. Oklahoma on a little bit of a 3-0 run to take a 12-8 lead here in the first set. The Sooners, when they don't make mistakes, they're hitting 750 here to get things started tonight. But the three service errors giving ACU a couple of points. Roar sets. Left side, Ashley Edmiston. That was a great way to cut out of a timeout. There's a lot to like about this Abilene Christian team. Yes, Zach, I think that they're, they're a lot scrappier than they have been in the past years, and they're doing a really good job of moving the ball around. Left side, Taylor Preston. OU's got that answer. They've been really, really effective on the outside so far. Yeah, they have. Take a look, another look. You can see, you can see just how good the setter for OU is, just because the middles on ACU side are having to guess where she's going, and they're being late to the block. That time to the middle, and the point for Kelsey Carrington, the junior out of Wisconsin. Didn't play a ton last year as a 
sophomore. 13 matches. Another service error, however, though, for OU. That's been their only issue so far tonight. Braden Bozier will serve for Adeline Christian. These Wildcats are coming off of back-to-back -back losses to UTEP and Tulsa in the Oral Roberts Tournament. They're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Point for OU. Sooners go up by five after the kill from Megan Wilson. Steinhilber left side. Soft touch, Wilson. London Gray for Appling Christian. Roar. Got her hands on it. Gray, another chance. And long. OU has built its biggest lead at six points. Stein Hilber. Oh, looks mistimed right there. Maybe a miscommunication? Yeah, maybe, Zach. I think that they're a little flustered right now. They're kind of down more than they were in the beginning of the game and a couple plays back to back that haven't worked out. I think they just need to get back, get a good pass to the front of the net, and just try to find a good play off the top. Edmiston on the dig, now on the attack. She'll get the point. That might have been tipped. Yeah, it was. It was out the back line, but it was touched. That's the one most unfortunate thing when you're in the middle. You're just trying to block the back row, and you tip it barely as it sails out of bounds. Not much your back row can do for that. ACU serves Madeline Guffey. Taylor Preston there on the left side for OU. That's a block. Carrington was in there with Chamberlain for the block for the Sooners. That's a big block on the ACU's outside hitter. They're going to have to figure out a way to hit around that or tip around it if they're going to have success this game, I think. Browning gets it over to Steinhilber. Left side into the game and scoring Alexis Shelton. Timeout, Abilene Christian. 19-11, Oklahoma in front of Abilene Christian. And I tell you what, OU's hitting 684. Hey, they don't seem to have any problems on that side. No, I think they're getting really good passes to the net off of defense and off of serve receive, and it's allowing the setter to be able to put the ball wherever she wants it on the front row, and OU is capitalizing on that. Um, she's hit the middle, she's hit the outside, she's throwing it back a few times, and ACU middles and blockers are having to guess which way she's going every single time because their passing has been so efficient. And you're saying it's still starting on that serve receive and it keeps OU in system. It definitely helps um, It helps run your offense when the ball goes straight, right to where the setter's supposed to be. I think that's what ACU struggled with a little bit so far is um, just getting their serve receive passes and their defensive passes up to the net. There's a lot of out of system balls that are having to be sent to the outside. And that just makes it really hard for um, it makes it really hard for ACU to get any type of offense going when OU knows where the ball's headed every time out of system. Abilene Christian in four of their five losses, they won the opening set. They did get swept 3-0 against CSU Fullerton to open the season. But then in every other loss, they have won the opening set. So I'm curious to see if this doesn't go their way, how they then would respond in set number two tonight. Do you think there's been any nerves for Abilene Christian opening up this brand new beautiful building? You know, I think there might be a little bit of pressure on the Wildcats just being the first game in Moody. Like, it's been something that's been talked about. We've had First Chapel. We've had Wildcat Week. You know, you've had the big, you've had big like student events. This is the first big athletic event, event in Moody Coliseum. That is now five service errors 
for OU. So five of the 12 points for the Wildcats have come off of Oklahoma serving mistakes. Steinhelber serves for the Wildcats. Left side, soft touch from Shelton. Jada Burkle for ACU. Preston from the middle. Edmiston left side. Well defensed by Kaylee Kimoha. Burkle. This is fun. Oh, you wins the point, but that was a battle. That was a really good volley right there, Zach. Both teams kind of played out of system a little bit. Oh, you just ended up having success in the end. Just the misfire. Grace Talpesh is going to serve it. California kid transfer from University of San Francisco back in 2020 now. Year three with Oklahoma. Nine point lead. OU's four away from the opening set victory. On the left side, Edmiston to the middle. Power from Perkins. Oh, good scramble from OU. Great pickup by OU. Middle. Oh, authority. Three box. Wow. That's one thing you and me talked about, Zach, pregame is um, Coach Blair looking for the middles to get involved in the offense a little bit more this year. And I think that Braden Bozier and Bree Box have both done a really good job of being available for their setter tonight when the ball hits to the net. No chance for Megan Wilson. They checked to make sure she was okay after that one. It looked like hit off of her face. And on the left side, Shelton again. Impressive freshman out of North Carolina. These long, tall, quick athletes power for OU. It's showing here in the first set. Out the back line again. That's been their biggest efficiency tonight so far for OU is their service. Came in with 65 errors off the serve this season, and they've got six tonight. Outside of that, they're hitting 577. I wonder if they can't see the lines on the floor, Zach. I feel like I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Kimoha sends it across. ACU goes left, it is wide from Edmiston. You have to imagine it might be pretty intimidating to be hitting around as big of a block as they see it on OU. And then do you feel like you have to give it as much force as possible and then it goes wide? I think trying to turn it a little bit, you try to drop your thumb a little bit to try to get it around the block and you kind of just run out of court once you get, once you turn it enough. Braden Bozier. There's the activity out of the middle that we've been talking about, Zach. I've loved watching Braden Bozier over the last couple years. She's a junior now. I think that she's playing with a lot more confidence than she has in the past, and it's been really fun to watch her grow as a player. To your point on that, Elisa Blair telling us that the growth she's seen the most from when she got here in January until the season started was from Braden Bozier. Roar digs, diving attempt. I know you gets it. And we're at the first set point now for Oklahoma. OU coming off of that weekend where they won nine to one in three matches. Lost just the one set to Fresno State. OU looking for the dagger in set one, and they're not gonna get it. Steinhilber keeps ACU alive. Substitution. 
They're going to sub in a defensive specialist to play some defense on this last point. Sarah Carazales, the freshman out of Arlington, Texas. And that's it on the right side for Oklahoma to take set one, 25 to 16. Whack Volleyball on ESPN resumes after these messages. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Today's matchup serves as a historic day for ACU Athletics. For after a long two years all, of all indoor sports being housed in the Teague Center, the Wildcats are finally able to make their grand return to the newly renovated Moody Coliseum. The multi-million dollar project began in January 21, but faced multiple delays pushing the opening till the fall. But it was worth it with renovations encompassing the newly designed Russell Court, walker rooms, and plenty of other additions. According to ACU head coach Alisa Blair, the athletes are really excited about the opening of Moody because of the return to play, to, return to, to the return of playing in Moody and having a permanent home. Guys, back to you. Carrie, thank you very much. Yeah, this place is pretty special as you showcase the brand new Moody Coliseum. It took a while. They got it to go after the makeshift kind of court that they built for volleyball and basketball over in the Teak Center. Now back in where we should be uh, in Moody Coliseum. It's been a pretty special night. I think so, Zach. I think there's a lot of energy in here. There's a lot of people. You know, there's less seats than there was in old Moody. And so I think having purple seats changes the game, but just being able to have everybody close in the space is really special. Yeah, they're having a lot of fun here. And I tell you who had fun, Oklahoma. I mean, that was a really impressive first set, hitting 586 and winning it 25 to 16. Yeah, Zach, it was pretty impressive. I think what really kept them hitting that high of average was their um, defense and their serve receive. I think ACU needs to turn up the service pressure a little bit to try to make it a little bit harder for OU to get the ball to the front of the net, and it might uh, help them out in the long run. This is the lone home match for ACU in the non-conference season. Trying to make the most of it, and they walk them in the power five. What a way to open the building. And then they'll wait and in nine days' time, open up whack play. And so that's the beauty of playing a, an opponent of this caliber, is this really gets you ready when conference play comes around, because that's when the season matters the most. Oklahoma to serve it to start set number two, Chloe Kaminsky. The freshman out of Missouri gets us started. 
London Gray on the left side. Second year Wildcat, transfer from Georgia. And out the back line goes OU with Megan Wilson and ACU goes up 1-0 to start the set. Can they take advantage of the mistake and build another point on top of it? That's what didn't happen very often in the first set. Rohr sets right side, point. After Gray got blocked at the net. Tally Kimoha is going to serve it. All Big 12 rookie team a year ago. Steinhilber was denied. ACU pushes. And now OU left side. It's wide. Preston couldn't convert. That point didn't result in an OU point, but their offense is just so fast, Zach. Their setter's throwing the ball everywhere, and it's happening very quickly. And what does that do to a defense when things happen like that? It's so hard to be ready to pass a ball when you're still moving to the spot you're supposed to be. That set on the other side is just getting there so quickly. Three box, couldn't quite get her hand on it. It falls short in the point to the Sooners to even it up. Yeah, 18 kills for OU, just three attack errors. Meanwhile, ECU seven errors. They're hitting just 032. Just haven't had a lot of chances. Browning for Steinhilber. OU quickly again. Did that stay in? Yes, it did for Preston. Much to the dislike of the Moody Coliseum crowd. see a challenge here. I think so. Looks like a coach's challenge from Elisa Blair of a ACU. See if we can take a peek at it. ACU challenges. Let's see if we can get a look at it. Our replay as it stands, it's OU leading three to two. Take another look. That looked like it might have hit the logo on the floor. Yeah, and if that's the case, that Wessel Court logo is out of bounds. They're taking a look at it on the replay system. Take another peek. Let's see if we have it here. This might be a better angle. It'll take us through the full point. So ACU sends it across. The question will be on the return. Does this stay in bounds? It looks out initially. It's close. That's really close. I think so. It's a challenge from Elisa Blair, the head coach of ACU. That was a pretty good angle. We'll see if we can get one more look at it. And away we go again. Let's see if we can get one more look. By the way, they did reverse it. They're calling this out. Looked out to me. What do you think? I think that's the right call, Zach. I think. Those are the little plays that are going to help ACU keep their momentum if they can keep if they can keep getting letting uh, OU score for them in certain areas. So they switch it and ACU's up three to two. Coach's challenge was a success for Elisa Blair. OU sets it up with Preston. Brie Box out of the middle. 
Looks like the Wildcats have settled down a little bit. I think that was full circle of what we've kind of been talking about. That was a good serve that kept them out of system a little bit off of the uh, off OU off the first pass, and then it allowed on the other end, ACU got the ball to the net, and they were able to run to the middle, which resulted in a point. Left side for Preston again. Kentucky freshman. Left hand, that didn't work for Peyton Chamberlain. Maybe a sliver of momentum for these Wildcats here. OU back to work. We've seen a lot of Taylor Preston. Her fourth kill. And Preston will serve it out of Union, Kentucky. I'll tell you, Zach, between Preston and Shelton on the outside, OU has some big hitters on the outside for them. ACU to the middle with Edmiston. Right side, Carrington. Wisconsin middle blocker who is hitting just shy of 700 for the season in what limited chances she gets. Just no errors with the eight kills coming in. Off to a good start when they need her to. Steinhilber was denied. Carrington was there for the block at six foot three. Taylor Preston to serve in a 5-5 tie. It's a 3-0 run for the Sooners. Steinhilber blocked, but the point for the Cats this time. I'm curious when you do have this height and it's hard to get around the blockers, how do you get creative if you're ACU? They're, they're doing okay here in set two. I think you just have to keep trying new things. You can't keep doing the same thing because a good team like OU is going to adjust every single time. Power from the middle for Wilson. ACU there. You see a lot of Madeline Guffey here. The setter spot for Abilene Christian. Here in this set, ACU sets it up. Burkle right side. Adjustment for Wilson. Both teams playing out of the middle back row a little bit. Left side, ACU keeps it alive. And then wide from Bree Box. All even at six. A little bit more back and forth here in this set. As OU just looks to Stop making mistakes on the serve, and then they've been really having no issues since then. Burkle gets a second try. That just tight ropes the net and then put down from Box. I think they called Bree Box in the net right there. Yes, they did. In the net, OU gets the point and the lead. Talpesh serves. Burkle, good right swing there. Oh, oh that hit the video board. I, you know, Zach, I was wondering that before pregame. I was like, just the way volleyball goes, that uh, big <laughs> jumbotron looks kind of low for things to happen right there. Yeah, that, you didn't see it. It's a little bit off of camera there, but Wilson sent it so high, it hit the bottom of the video board. Blocked. ACU giving it back to OU a little bit out of the middle. That's Bozier blocking Perkins. And Morgan Perkins is spectacular out of the middle for OU. Good play by Bozier. Left side, that works when it's Shelton. ACU recovered nicely with Browning. Out of the middle. 
power from Perkins. ACU adjusts. Burkle a look. OU sets it up. Soft touch, Shelton. Another good volley. That one's going to drop for the Sooners. That's both my teams. favorite kind of volleyball right there. Me too, there. me too, Zach. And both teams played a little bit out of system right there, but both teams had really good pickups on the backside. Just OU came out with the point in the end. Perkins had the last laugh that time. Left side in to deny again. It's Wilson and Perkins who are beasts in the net. I've been very impressed with OU's uh, front line. They've done a really good job of being on every single set that the setter is set on and keeping ACU thinking about hitting around the block. It's five blocks tonight for Oklahoma. A service ace for Peyton Chamberlain and now another chance at it. Transfer out of Wyoming. It's her first year at OU. Played in 24 matches a year ago for the Wyoming Cowgirls. Right side, Wilson. Megan Wilson. She was the AVCA Southwest Region Freshman of the Year last year. She's showing it right there. Timeout, Abilene Christian. 11-8, Oklahoma. They're on a 4 nothing run to take the lead in set two. Oh, dreamed of doing something that would make a difference and so getting as much knowledge as possible was important to me. I love the fact that you can dream a new reality and then see it come true with hard work. Today I know I'm making a difference and a big part of seeing my dream come true was when I got my master's at ACU. Get your undergraduate or graduate degree online at Abilene Christian University. Abilene Christian out of the time out. 11 to 8 Sooners here in the second set. Much closer here in, in set two, much more back and forth. Abilene Christian's made some adjustments. Yeah, I think that has, Zach. I also think this is kind of at the time where OU last set went on their run, so I think ACU needs to come out of that timeout and just make sure that they keep, keep chipping away at points and keep letting OU score for them and capitalizing on those balls. Great way to start the first out of that timeout. Service error for Chamberlain. And I wonder if that's why the timeout was called by Elisa Blair. Sensed it sip slipping away just a little bit. You know, it's I think it's kind of like icing the server. You know, you want to just kind of make them think about it a little bit. Sometimes it works out for you. Madison Rohr serves for the Wildcats. Right side, Shelton again. ACU out of system there. Shelton denied that time. Left side, Wilson. Oh, ACU got underneath it. Madison Rohr to the middle. It is in for Perkins, and it might have been tipped. Point that, for OU. That, um, that possession, Zach, they switched Shelton and Wilson. Wilson was playing outside right there, and Shelton was playing on the right side out of that timeout. Chloe Kaminsky serves. ACU blocked. That's Edmiston. Well done defensively by Kaminsky. ACU tries to recover. Great hustle by Logan Browning right there to keep the ball in play. Browning's been busy. She's going to hit it wide. She was running all around on that point. 
OU takes the 22nd point to go up 13 to nine. London Gray, that will work for the Wildcats. I think the Wildcats are going to have to figure out how to use that block to their advantage. If they can't hit around it, they got to figure out how they're going to be able to use it to score points. Perkins got her hands on it, but it goes out of bounds. Edmiston serves. That was really good service pressure right there. Browning's been very busy for ACU. Right side. Steinhilber blocked. Left side, Taylor Preston again. She's been super impressive tonight, Zach. We mentioned the freshman outside hitter out of Kentucky. Finished her career at St. Henry District High School with over 1,300 kills, over 270 blocks, over 400 digs. Did a little bit of an all. She is a spectacular talent. Kimoha got a hand on it. Gave OU a chance. She's going to give him a chance again. Left side, Preston. Middle, no. Oh, the Bozier. guy over here is calling a touch. Zach, his lineman. Wait a second. It's a touch, and it's a point for the Wildcats. Let's see. Ooh, close. The Wildcats were pretty confident that there was a tip on it. If it was touched, it was Preston. No challenge from OU. 14-11. Wilson. <laughs> That's going to work. Well, you think just when you think she's going to wind up and hit a fastball. I think playing a pretty powerful hitting team like this, you have to assume that they're every team, every pass that they're going to Every set that they're going to hit is coming at you hard, and when they tip it, it's probably pretty surprising. 15-11 Sooners. Yeah. Middle for Box. So much more activity out of the middle this season for ACU. And ACU has so much success when they are able to run the ball through the middle. When they're just throwing it throwing it to your outsides and your right sides out of system, it just makes it really easy for, for uh, your opponent to play defense on you. Set from Chamberlain. Left side, OU's Preston again. Chamberlain's an impressive setter. We've talked about that most of the night. I was just about to say that, Zach. She is really good at putting the ball exactly where it needs to be, no matter where she where she sets it from on the floor. And then she also had a career high nine blocks against Fresno State. So she can just really do everything. Spectacular talent. OU trying to take a commanding 2-0 lead. Up five in set two. ACU's going with Burkle. Oh, that'll work. That's an interesting celebration over there. They've done a few interesting things this game so far. <laughs> Shelton left side. Haven't seen quite as many celebrations from the Sooners over there. The crazy ones have come from the Wildcats. Substitution and Talpesh to serve out of California. Burkle right side. 
Jamie I feel like Burkle. we haven't called her name a lot tonight. Yeah, no, we haven't seen, we haven't um, been able to say her name a lot, but she did, she did come with the heat on that one to put it away for the Wildcats. That's her first kill in eight attempts, or rather second kill in nine attempts. Left side, Shelton. Steinhilber coming from the back. Well, then right to the middle for Perkins. When they decide to go to her, she is really hard to stop. That's quick, too. And you know how hard it is as a setter to be able to be behind your hitter and put it in a place where they're able to hit it? You have to be very talented. That just shows how good of a setter Chamberlain is. Blocked. It's Wilson and Perkins doubling up. OU first to 20 in this set. They take the 34th point. And a timeout call by Abilene Christian. OU starting to pull away again here in this second set. And again, it just, it, it's a little bit of everything. Sometimes it's defense, sometimes it's perfectly set balls that turn into kills. And then that time again, really good play at the net. I think ACU struggled just a little bit to play out of system, to score out of system. Once they get the ball to the net, I think they've capitalized on a lot of balls. But just playing out of system right now, OU's pretty confident at where every ball is going on their out of system balls. And their block is so big that it's so hard for the outside hitters to continuously figure out a way to hit around them differently. And so I think that's kind of where they struggled so far. 20 to 14 OU. Let's check in with Kerry Johnson over on the sideline. Thanks, Zach. After having a 5-4 start at this point of the 2021 season, things have changed for the Sooners in 2022. With the team starting off the season 7-2 and, and are currently on a four-game winning streak. Their only losses of the season came at the hands of the LUV tournament in a four-set loss and a five-set loss. Apart from those two, the Sooners have dominated the season, either sweeping three sets or have an occasional four sets. So it'll be interesting to see if the Sooners continue to stay hot or if the Wildcats have something to say about it. Guys, back to you. Kerry, thank you very much. As Oklahoma leads it 20 to 14 after another timeout call by Abilene Christian. Back to action we go. We haven't seen a lot of Ashley Edniston. Soft touch that time. She's had a little bit of a rough night, but converts there. found the hole right in the middle of the OU defense right there. I think that was a good play on her part, Zach. Emmiston hitting negative 059 tonight, but gets that important 15th point. ACU needs a bit of a run. Steinhilber with good defense. Moha sets it up for Wilson. Back row, out, Preston couldn't keep it in. That was a good volley for the ACE, for ACU. I think a, a couple of them, the last time that they've had a few volleys between the two of them, ACU has it come out on the top side. That's one of the first ones that they came out on the top side. Chamberlain for Wilson, look out. Wow. She brought the heat on that one. And we've talked about out of system and kind of scramble mode a little bit here tonight. Talking to Elisa Blair earlier this week, the ACU head coach, and she was telling us just 75% of volleyball is playing out of system. And really it gets challenging, And but it's the teams that can succeed at doing that that, that end up winning and, and having the, the quality nights that they're looking for. That's a block at the net from Wilson. But there's a difference between just playing out of system and then being able to score out, out of system. system. You've touched on that a couple of times. Yeah, tonight. Zach, it definitely, it's definitely being able to figure out what works best for you and being able to switch it up out of system too. You know, if you send every ball to your outside during out of system, it's just not going to work. Outside work that time, Braden Bozier. 
She's impressed you all night long. She has, Zach. She's definitely matured a lot as a player, and I, I, you can see that she plays with more confidence every single play. She has hit at least 200 in every set, or next, in every match except for two this year. Pushes that across. Wilson right side. I mean, when you start 6-4, your wingspan and your vertical, good luck. You know, it's hard to see at this angle that we're at, Zach, but she, Wilson could very much be hitting on top of the block just for how high her reach is. Good luck defending that. Steinhilber right. denied. Gets a second chance. Blocked again. Third chance. Bozier from the middle. They'll get the point. They're trying to survive here in the second set. They'll take it. So you got ACU that's nine wins a year ago. Three and nine in the WAC. They did make the WAC tournament as that sneaking in and then lost to Sam Houston in the opening round. ACU also made the Southern Conference tournament in the spring of 2021. It's a kill from the middle. Kelsey Carrington of Oklahoma. So ACU's made the conference tournament every year they've been eligible except for 2019. Just trying to improve their standing going into the postseason again after going just three and nine in their first year in the WAC a season ago. Steinhilber blocked. It's Chamberlain and Carrington at the net to win it for the Sooners. 25-18 OU as they take set two, go up 2-0. Whack Volleyball on ESPN back after these messages. Welcome back to WAC Volleyball here on ESPN to the brand new Moody Coliseum, Oklahoma, up two sets to nothing as we get ready to start set three. Zach Carlisle, Maddie Miller, Kerry Johnston, and the gang, Hutton Harris, Tom Searle, and the ACU TV crew in the studio. Glad to have you with us tonight as the Sooners look to get this thing going here in set number three after winning it 25 to 18 in set two. A lot to like about the way the Sooners have played here tonight. Yeah, they've definitely come out strong, Zach, and they're not playing sloppy. You know, I think it's, um, it's kind of something that happens sometimes when really good teams come. I say that, they just shake the ball. <laughs> of course. But it's really, it sometimes happens when really good teams come and play teams that they're supposed to beat, and they can get sloppy from times, but I haven't seen that from the Sooners other than they're serving tonight. And they really cleaned that up after the first set. They had set, uh, five service errors in the first, just two in the second. And that's going to be a little wide from OU. And it is a 2 nothing start for Abilene Christian. About as perfect of a start for ACU as you could draw up. Addison Rohr to serve it. From the middle, why not go to Taylor Preston? ACU blocked the defense of OU tonight. Looks like uh, ACU has had a libero change. Sarah Carrizales comes in as the freshman libero number 11 out of Arlington, Texas. Chloe Kaminsky serves. Steinhilber middle, nothing. OU responds with back-to-back -back points. A 
Oh, that one's a little off from the reception of Carrizales. Turns into a point for OU. Kaminsky serves again three in a row now for the Sooners. Braden Bozier. Left side Preston. Miss fire, and we're even at three. Just wondering if ACU can take advantage of some of these mistakes from the Sooners. I think that's going to be a big key for them this set if they want to um, if they want to come out with this set. Just the second meeting between these two teams. Played last year in Norman, OU came away with the sweep there. They are on their way towards that tonight as well. Unless ACU can salvage set number three, trailing 2-0. Steinhilber left side. Is it in? No. I'd like to see them try to maybe, they've kept it close both sets, the first two sets, point for point up until they reach about 14 or 15. I would like to see if they could try to Extend, extend their challenging up until later in the set. 25-16, set one, 25-18, set two. Bozier pushes that one across. Rohr sets up. Steinhilber wide. Just those out of system balls that we've talked about, Zach, just being able to capitalize or at least keep them into play to where it makes it harder or easier for your team to get back into defensive position to get ready for the ball to come back to your side. Rohr does that herself. Now sets up Steinhilber. That should be a point for ACU, and it is. When they're out of system like that, does that mess up the set as well? Uh, I think right there, I think it honestly helped ACU having Madison tip it just because it kept the middle sitting right there on her trying to figure out where she was going to go and then sending it back out to Steinhelber, it kind of stagnated the middle a little bit so that way she had more of an open block on the other side. London Gray that time. The kill on the right side. We've talked about it a little bit, Zach, but OU's offense is just so fast. They get the ball to their set to their setter quickly, and she, Chamberlain has just done a great job of distributing it quickly and confidently every single set. Megan Wilson with that kill for OU, and she will serve. You see the record, OU 7-2 and two to start the year. Their best start since 2019, and what happened that fall, they made the NCAA tournament. It's the last time they were there. Lost to Rice in the opening round in College Station. That was the second year under Lindsey Gray Walton, now in year five as the Sooner head coach. London Gray got it. There's a lot to say about it being year five for Coach Walt Gray Walton because that means everybody on this roster is her player that she recruited. And I think that makes a really big difference in when it comes from coaching transition. You evaluate what you have, then you start getting your first recruiting class, and then eventually you get the full cycle. Now thrown in there is a couple of very strange years where you have to play in the spring and everything gets shut down. Very odd. Everybody had to figure that nonsense out. Left side for ACU, rather out of the middle, Bree Box. And ACU gets a very important sixth point. ACU's just had so much more success when they're able to run their middles consistently tonight. Madeline Guffey serving. Funny story about Guffey. Was talking to head coach Elisa Blair. And when Guffey, Guffey's former spot was at North Central Texas College, she's the first year at ACU. And Coach Blair said, hey, that was my rival when I was at Hill College. I said, okay, well, how'd you do against your rival? She said, no, I never lost. Are you kidding me? Never lost to her rival. <laughs> OU on the kill that time. Go back up to 9-7. Taylor Preston serves. 
for the Sooners. There is Lindsey Gray Walton, the head coach of Oklahoma. Box. Weird swing that time. I think it's really hard to run your middle um, off a of serve receive. Your middle, the middle on the other side, sitting there already from the serve. They're waiting. They're waiting on it. I think it's hitting the middle in transition is more effective. But that's when we get out of ACU gets out of system a lot, so it kind of takes their middles away. Back row Guffey, but now it is Burkle. Not a lot of chances for number seven tonight, but she's been effective when she's had the chances. She said, if the block's gonna touch it, I'm just gonna try to hit through it. <laughs> Resulted in her point though. Senior out of Austin, Texas, and a transfer out of Memphis in her second year with the Wildcats. Left side, Shelton. Oh, from the middle. Oklahoma back in front by three. I was wondering what happened there. Burkle pushed it back, and then Shelton responded. Guffey sets up Burkle, and ACU gets the point. Looks like the, were the Sooners in the net there? They might have been. We're getting to this OU's into double digits. You kind of get to that 13, 14, 15 points. That seems to be the turning point so far through the first couple of sets. And there's the 12th for OU. They go to Perkins out of the middle. That is just such an amazing set by Chamberlain. She had the ball set. She was setting the ball on the 10-foot line and was able to hit her middle right on the net. Just the talent that you have to have to be able to do that. It makes a difference in your offense for sure. They are glad to get her from Wyoming. And she was good last year. 481 assists for Wyoming. Oh, there was some celebration going on, but OU recovered. Not done yet. And then the Sooners take advantage of the point. Elisa Blair was wondering what happened. ACU started to celebrate. I thought it was uh, an ACU point, but I think I think OU was able to recover off the block. Mm. Puts the Sooners up four. Key moment in set three as OU tries to sweep on the road. Bozier blocked. The Sooners will be very happy to end this seven-game road trip. They're going to be doing really well on it, especially if they can come out with a victory. They're looking for their fifth win in a row. There it is for Brayden Bozier out of the game. It's been effective tonight. It has. London Gray back in. Fourteen to ten, Oklahoma. I was happy to see Braden to continue to swing because she just got blocked on the slide on the play before that. Madison Rohr, another chance after the service ace. Left side, Wilson. And a 15-11 lead for OU. Kaminsky will serve for the Sooners. Pivotal moment again. This is the point where you get around the 26th, 27th points. It's really turned for the Sooners tonight, and they build up a five-point lead. They've done really, really good down the stretch in each of the sets, Zach, and I think that just shows kind of like 
the level that they're at, they being able to close out games, close out sets, and just stay composed all the way through. Last, oh, go right out of the middle. It was Perkins. It's just impressive. Talk about being multiple. That's what these Sooners are. Timeout. Abilene Christian, Oklahoma, has the six-point lead in the third. Seventeen eleven, Oklahoma in set number three. There's the gang in the ACU TV studio running our show tonight. Here on ESPN Plus, Hutton Harris, Tom Searle, and the gang. The studios at Carlisle, Maddie Miller, and Kerry Johnston with you. Oklahoma, we talked about it briefly. They're going to be excited to go back home after this. They haven't been home since August, but they're going to go back home for Texas Southern and Nevada before then going to number one Texas so they are they are going to be very excited to get back to Norman for a couple of uh, matches there to close out the non-conference play playing at home is definitely different Zach and I think that'll give them an opportunity to gain some momentum before they go and face tough Texas head to Austin for the top ranked team in the country to open Big 12 play September the 24th they've got a 6-0 lead and they're on a 3-0 run right now ACU responds to the big point they're ACU's 12. done a really good job tonight of coming out uh, off of timeouts and being able to score the first point. What does the 30th point bring? Ashley Edmiston with a big kill. The freshman serves. Down five. Down four. An attack error. That's one of the few hitting errors that we've seen tonight from Perkins alone, but OU in general. Two in a row for Abilene Christian, trying to hang around. Another point ACU. The serve worked that time and got Oklahoma out of system. Emmiston, the Oregon native, Wilsonville, Oregon. Kill for the Sooners to respond to go back up four. Kali Kimoha is going to serve it. All Big 12 rookie team last year. The sophomore from Lucas, Texas gets a service ace. What a time for that. Looking for that all-important 20th point here to put ACU in a big bind. Briley Steinhilber blocked. A second chance. Left side, Preston, yes. She's been super efficient tonight, in system and out of system for OU, and I think that's kind of been the difference of why ACU kind of struggles around this 14, 15 point range because as OU gets out of system, they still are capitalizing on their plays. Kimoha, service error. Take a peek at the schedule. We talked about it briefly for OU, but Texas Southern and Nevada, much needed returns to Norman for the Sooners, and then off they go to number one Texas for that big rivalry, KU and West Virginia. Those three open up Big 12 play for Oklahoma. Left side for Preston. Bozier's there. Steinhilber gets a big one. Keeps ACU alive. Four point game. We could talk about Braden Bozier's defense from left back right there. You could see her team get a little excited <laughs> for her dig. 
It gave him a chance. Bozier serves. Kill right side. It's Wilson. We saw what OU's got. How about ACU? They're heading to the TCU tournament in Fort Worth this weekend, Texas State, and then the Horned Frogs. Louisiana as well before they open up whack play with Sam Houston and UT Arlington. They'll be back here in Moody Coliseum for those on the 22nd and the 29th back-to-back -back Thursdays. Free box out of the middle, no. It's a misfire, and Oklahoma is two, three points away. What's impressed you most about the Sooners tonight? I just think this, I think Chamberlain has been the most impressive to me. Just being able to find a hitter, no matter where the ball is, and just be able to run her offense efficiently as she has. Right side, London Gray. They'd love to get her going. Transfer out of Georgia. Didn't have too much of an impact last season. Moving her to the right side this year. They think they've got a lot of potential there with number 12. Madeline Guffey to serve. Five point difference. Right side, Carrington. Carrington, an interesting story, too, out of Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin. Making her return this year after being sidelined last year due to an illness. They're so glad to have her back and happy that she's able to contribute on the floor. OU two points away. Box from the middle. Left side, Shelton, yes. First match point coming up for Oklahoma. It's been a fun night in Moody Coliseum, hasn't it? It has been. I think the, Ace, I think the Wildcats opened up um, really gritty tonight, just trying to keep themselves in, pl in, in play and in the game. Great atmosphere, great energy. There's been some great volleyball. Great volleyball for the Sooners as they went at 25-17. It's a clean sweep in Abilene, Texas for Oklahoma. 25-16, 25-18, and now 25 18 again, really impressive from OU tonight. Very impressive, I think that the, them being a young team, it's gonna be really um, interesting to see how they do going into conference play here in the next couple of weeks. Well, it was a whole lot of fun. Glad you could be with us tonight as Oklahoma wins at three nothing over ACU. Thanks for watching this presentation of WAC Volleyball on ESPN. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Until next time, Zach Carlisle, Matty Miller, Kerry Johnston, and the gang, led by Hutton Harris and Tom Searle. We're saying so long, take care. Good night from beautiful Moody Coliseum in Abilene, Texas.